In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, I'm starting work on the MR, MR2. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We're in my shed and we're gonna be working on the MR, MR2. Uh, you may have seen recently that it was really, really dirty. Um, hasn't been touched in quite a while. It hasn't been serviced in two years. Um, it drives okay, smokes a bit out the exhaust. There's a few other weird niggly issues about it that don't make sense. The alarm's a total pile of crap. It goes off in your head all the time, it's worst. Um, the inside's pretty rough. I've got a few parts and bits and pieces that I know it's definitely gonna need, but really, you're just going to come along for the ride while I figure it out. And hopefully together, we will work out how to make this thing a competitor and possibly a victor over that moon buggy. First up, the filth needs to be removed from the outside of the car before I can start on the filth inside the engine bay. This wonderful tool, known as a hoist or lift, means I won't have to roll around in mess underneath the car. It's way easier on your body. With the car in the air, I can take a closer look at what I'm dealing with. I start at the front and work my way back. Um, first thing you'll notice is rust. A fair bit of it actually, under the front. So this was a Japanese car. This doesn't really happen to cars in Australia like this. We don't have salted roads and we've got basically no snow. Um, there's a good chance this has had the front bumper parked in a snowbank at some point in its previous life. And that's just enough to sort of start this corroding and then time has just finished it off. Um, some of the suspension bushes have been replaced, like these sway bars, someone's put polyurethane replacement ones in there. But then some of the other bushes look like totally original and factory. Um, also notice that the shocks have wrecker riding on them, so there's a good chance that one or both has been replaced and the riding looks different. Um, so there's a good chance that someone has swapped that out at some stage. Um, moving back here, an interesting thing about these cars is where the fuel tank is. So this is the fuel tank here, it's directly underneath the shifter or right near that area. And it's this big long metal tank that goes all the way back to there, that's your drain. Uh, and to access it you've got to pull part of the inside of the car apart. Now I've never worked on an MR2 before, this is just stuff I've sort of looked at or looked at online to sort of get my head around. Um, there's a whole lot of long cables, like that's the handbrake cable. Um, there's a really long accelerator cable that goes all the way from the front to the back. This was before the days of e-throttle, so it kind of makes sense as to why. Um, you can see someone's painted on here, so there's a good chance this stuff has come out at some stage before. These big metal tubes is what the coolant runs up, so you've got the radiator up the front there with the fans, and then these big long metal pipes that go all the way to the back of the engine. Um, and then moving down, as I said, fuel drain, radiator pipes, here are the hoses here. There's some heat shields and stuff missing. This car did at some stage have an engine swap and it's been swapped back to turbo. So it's been completely out, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it means it may have got some love at that point. Um, the gearbox in this is, the turbo gearboxes are considered to be better than just the NA ones, a bit stronger. I can't remember the code, uh, but they are a good thing. Um, if you get, the, there's a particular model as well that has an LSD. I don't know if this one does. It feels like it does when you drive it. So maybe we got lucky and we've got a later box. Um, Otherwise, this now is kind of like a front wheel drive car. So it's all under there as you'd expect. The exhaust comes down under here off the back, well, the front of the engine, even though it's at the back. And then that's the exhaust. It looks like that all looks factory, all the dump and stuff, the flex joint. And then we've got this big, big muffler. Although I don't know what's going on with that because that doesn't sound factory to me. That sounds like it's been opened up or something has happened there as well. Um, good news is drive shafts are good. It doesn't leak anything. Um, the clutch feels really solid as well. So really it's just a matter of sort of tidying it up, doing a full service, replacing things like this fuel filter because the fuel has been sitting there for a long time um, and then potentially upgrading some of the management or some of the electronics to sort of bring it into the current, current generation. A bit like we did with the GTR because that just took that car from being kind of good to being awesome. Um, so we might drop it down and look in from the other side and see what there is to see. Stock turbo, as far as I can tell, it all looks very factory, um, but someone has put a bleed valve on it and a, I'm pretty sure that's an aftermarket blow off valve, um, and some kind of boost control. Uh, they've got, sorry, they've gotten rid of the factory boost control, and then there's, there's something going on here too with this um, intake, which you're going to have a look at. I think it's got an old school style vein airflow meter. Um, my mission with this, because it is actually getting hard to find upgrade parts for this car as well, like you can buy turbos, like new turbos, China turbos that may or may not bolt on. 
I don't want to spend a month trying to make a turbo fit to this. I'm scarred from that last time we did it. So I'm going to leave stuff that works. I'm going to leave it alone and I'm just going to fix stuff that doesn't like that airflow meter junk, the idles junk, the part throttle is junk, the boost control is not very good. I want to fix all that and just make it really nice to drive. Like fix all this random stuff that's, you know, over the years they've made sense, but these kind of mods don't really hold up over a long time. But before we do that, we'll drop the engine oil and have a look at it and possibly do the gearbox oil as well because it's unknown as how long that's been. Full fluid change and everything, probably even the brakes because it's been sitting at least two years without any of that stuff being touched. And I know for a fact we've got a light on the dash as well, like an ABS light. So gonna change all the fluids and then we'll come back and look at what we can do to upgrade this. So the bolt that goes into the water pipe, it's lovely like zinc coated or stainless or something and doesn't rust. It's got a mild steel bolt in it, which does rust and perishes and didn't take almost no force whatsoever to break that clean off. So I guess we're drilling it out. <laughs> car. Got your camera, sorry. According to the papers that came with this car, it just turned 30 and the 30 year old coolant pipes have fought back. When I tried to undo it, this side came out fine, but that side is seized and got caught in there, snapped the head of the bolt, and so I've had to drill it out. Because it requires like a copper sealing uh, washer on there, I'll have to tap it out to a specific size to make sure I can still get a good seal on that surface. There's enough meat in there that I should be able to do it fairly easily, but I don't have one. So it's probably a good time to call it, go and get some bits, wait for some bits to arrive and come back to it when it's all here. See you then. favorite tools we call these dac dacs i think they're called impact drivers it's like a three-speed roby one these adapters worth their weight in gold they adapt from the normal sort of like hex standard that these things use and clip in so they don't come out and then from there you can add your own sockets 3 8 in this case extensions all sorts of stuff it's so fast i know that my friend uh moog likes to use hand tools as much as possible i do too but turbo yoda once said that if you can save your wrists you should save your wrists Wisdom. Um, so these things I think come in really, really handy. You can also use the ratchet. This is really fast though. It doesn't work on stuff that's seized that well. It doesn't have the torque for it, but it'll do these kind of quick boltings and undoings really fast, which is awesome. God, this car's just falling apart onto me. Jesus. Every single bolt is getting stuck because it's just totally rusted. Wow. Not good. Just about every bolt I've taken out so far is a throwaway. So I'll need to find new ones to install, probably recycled ones left over from a Subaru that wasn't rusty. 
If it can't be undone, then it's getting drilled out or cut off. The radiator has seen better days, so it, along with what's left of the air conditioning system, is being removed either out the top or out the bottom. of the car body has stood up to the elements remarkably well. Other parts, like these radiator mounts, have turned back into dust and will need to be replaced. The surface rust can then be brushed off and I'll treat it with a rust converter and primer before it all goes back together. Seems like most of what fell away and onto my face um, was the leftovers of the radiator, the fans, and the aircon condenser because the cross member on here is actually pretty good, which is lucky because that's the structural bit of the car that replacing would be a massive pain in the balls. So um, scrubbing some of this back to get rid of some surface rust, I'm gonna have to get new standoffs for the radiator and a few bits of hardware because they're just disintegrated into dust. And um, the front area can go back together along with water to air intercooler radiator, which goes in front of our coolant system radiator. The new radiator I ordered has arrived, so I'm going to get it out of the box and make sure it's the right size. The guys who make them also sent us this mad template for spraying logos. I ordered a replacement dump pipe as the factory one has seen better days. Cool. That's so much easier than making one. <laughs> so, so much easier than making one. Donk! Because it'll be bolt on. You know it is. Everything always bolts on. Let's try and get the old dump off. is fighting me so hard. It just doesn't want to be messed with. Every single bolt I touch turns to dust. Everything, body part turns to dust. Actually, the only good thing is that the body itself is not that rusted. It's just sort of everything connected to it. Not at all what I was expecting from this car, to be honest. I heard they're a pain to work on, but I think when you add rust into the equation, it's like a whole next level. With the muffler off, the middle piece of the exhaust has to be wrangled out of the car by dropping the subframe down and loosening the rear sway bar. The rumour is it's possible to remove it without doing any of this, but it's a bit like one of those puzzles you get from the toy shop that you buy someone for a birthday or Christmas when you don't know what to buy them and then you go on the internet to read the walkthrough which then spoils a surprise and you never use it again. It's a bit like that. The dump pipe refuses to let go from the bottom as the bolts are seized and rounded off. The worst possible combination. I'll need to attack it from the top, which means removing everything above it. I don't think I've ever had a car fight me this hard. I, I knew this was going to be difficult, and people had told me and said these were difficult to work on, and they're right. But being a Japanese car, it uses all the same standard sizes, as all your tools fit, like that's all great. But the rust is just, just next level, just makes everything difficult because now this back bolt on this heat shield is, is totally rounded off. And granted, three or four other people may have been at this before. So now this heat shield is dead and will need to be cut off because I cannot get to that bolt without pulling the engine out. And I really don't want to pull the engine out. Could probably save a bunch of time by doing it, but just don't want to. Cut to a shot of us pulling the engine out. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The motor is staying in because we're going to win just with access to the top and the bottom. I've managed to undo all the bolts holding the dump pipe to the turbo, but one of the studs has seized in the housing, meaning I can't get it off past the oil filter. I can't cut it out, so now I'll have to remove the exhaust manifold and turbo completely. And down the mid-engined rabbit hole we go.
This is an old trick taught to me by an old net. Just kidding. I just made it up. Um, these extensions, you get ones that have threads on them. It's really good for putting a massive long spanner on and getting a tree falling on your shed. Um, it's really good for getting a bit of extra do. I've almost got this manifold off. The only way I can get this dump pipe to clear because the studs are all so rusted and corroded and probably haven't been touched in 30 years is to take the actual whole manifold off which gives us clearance to drop the dump. So we're working our way backwards until something works because <sighs> this is fighting me so hard. But we're going to get this dump off. If that's the only major thing that happens in this whole episode, it's going to come off today, right now. Let's do this. Thanks for watching. Next time on Mighty Car Mods, where we just fight MR2s all day that are rusty and junk, I'll put it back together and then I guess we'll do a skid and celebrate how much this sucked. Thanks for watching.